let's see where to start. I guess at the beginning, uh, my name is Kat and I'm a Canadian and I've been down in Las Vegas for the last 14 years. But originally, uh, the first car that I ever had actually wasn't a car, it was a go-kart and my father made it from a washing machine engine and it had a little piece of wood with a piece of rubber on the bottom of it as a brake. I was about six years old and I got to run around in that thing and just fell in love with the speed. So that was kind of my first car. Moved to England in the, um, the early 70s and my first car there was a, was a Fiat 126. Now if you don't know what that is, that's just one of the smallest cars there are, smaller than a Mini. And it had a pull start in the center. It was left hand drive of course and you had to shift with your right hand and I learned how to drive in England. Um, I love that car. It got me everywhere around London and it can park anywhere. 60 miles an hour downhill with the wind, it was wonderful. And uh, that was really my first car. But I loved the British cars. I got a chance to drive a uh, 19, I don't even remember the year, uh, MGB GT, some of the older Jags, some of the M other MGs that were out there, the um, the standard B's, a, an A, some of those things, and I loved them all. Um, I got into motorcycling though when I was uh, in my early 20s, and um, I've been a motorcyclist ever since, but the cars had always been kind of a, a background item in my life. When I uh, moved to Las Vegas in 2008, I met my husband Bill. He was uh, he had the Arlen Ness motorcycle dealership at the time, and uh, I was riding a Victory and he was the only shop in Vegas that would work on it. We were a group riding from Canada down to Miami, from Calgary to Miami, cutting through Vegas. So I stopped there, I met Bill and uh, he was very much a car guy and, uh, and a motorcycle guy. Got a chance uh, to meet with him, get together, we went to, uh, the group of us went to Florida, came back and he was still there. Anyway, I ended up married to Bill. Um, at that time, he was he was had a 1953 Hudson Hornet named Trixie, and that was his baby. And I loved her. Um, I think maybe I was one of the first uh, women who looked at that car when he picked me up in it and said, "That's the coolest thing I've ever seen," because she's a little old, but she was done up real nice, and um, I loved the idea of the older vehicles and uh, how they looked and how they felt and how they drove. And um, then about two years, uh, three years after um, that, uh, after Bill sold the Arlen Ness dealership, he started Atomic Motors. Or two or three months actually after he sold Arlen Ness, uh, he started Atomic Motors. And he kind of kicked, dragged me in um, because he needed help. It just grew so fast. And that now is seven years ago. So here we sit on five acres with four buildings full of classic vehicles. And in those buildings are probably four or five vehicles that I would love to own personally, um, plus the ones that Bill has built for me so far. Currently we're working on a 1941 Cadillac that'll be my daily driver. It's uh, two-tone green, full green leather, pastel green leather interior, and it's an absolute beautiful car. It's a coupe, so it's what Clark Gable would have driven as a movie star in the 40s. And uh, that'll be my daily driver. Um, probably be ready for Christmas time. There are beautiful vehicles out there that are hugely expensive. On my business card, I have a 1932 Mercedes-Benz. Um, convertible that is absolutely gorgeous. It's probably, you could probably buy one for three to three point five million dollars at this point. Although that's a beautiful car and who wouldn't want to drive one? Um, it's, uh, I, I would drive it of course. You know what I love? A 1958 convertible Nash. <laughs> or the fun cars, you know, there's so many fun vehicles out there to drive. Um, as an example, Bill took a, we bought a, um, what is it, a 1973 uh, Cutlass. 
and they have swivel seats in the front, you know, the swivel bucket seats. Just fantastic. It had kind of an anemic engine, a little 350 in it. They didn't run very well, but uh, it had 18,000 original miles. So who can complain? A beautiful condition. So we put an LS in it. And I tell you, that car just goes great. What a beautiful car to drive. The air conditioner works fantastic. It's up on the road easy and smooth. And it's like driving a modern car, but it's definitely a, an old car. Um, I like the engine swaps that we're doing on these older vehicles. Um, you know, the younger buyers right now, and I, I would include myself in a younger buyer, although I'm not uh, young, I'm certainly in that age group that are buying classics, but we kind of like our creature comforts. We like air conditioning, we like Bluetooth, we like a quiet engine, all of those things, and we like a lot of power. And so engine uh, swapping an engine, maybe doing a disc brake conversion to make sure you can stop, adding some sway bars and stuff because you can get a little more speed, um, is just now standard in our business and we do a lot of it. So I think pretty well any older vehicle that's been well maintained um, interior wise and um, um, uh, can easily be an engine swap can be done and you can end up with just such a lovely car to drive and uh, still have the beautiful design elements of the older vehicles that I love so much I find that the vehicles today typically it, your standard con, con, commuter vehicles all kind of look the same you know uh, that certainly wasn't the case in the 40s 50s and 60s and even up into the 70s and 80s um, the 70s muscle cars, I love, I mean, uh, give me a, a 70 Chevelle with, a, with a, an LS in it and I'm, I'm all over it. I love it. Um, so I think those are kind of the cars that I, I like the most. I like the sound of the combustion engine. However, we are turning a 1969 Cadillac Eldorado into a electric car. It'll have a, a Tesla underneath of it. So it's going to be a 1969 Tesla Eldorado. Um, and then we're also taking an older um, electric vehicle and putting a combustion engine in it, an LS engine in it. So, you know, all sorts of things can be done in these cars to make them very drivable and very nice. And uh, I just look forward to seeing what comes in the door next. I'm also really looking forward to getting my uh, 41. And if that engine that currently is in it, which is the old flat eight, if that doesn't work well in this kind of weather and everything, we'll just take it out and put in a modern drive line. But uh, that'll be ready for Christmas, so I'll look forward to that. Atomic Motors has just grown so quickly and uh, there's lots of plans to grow more. Now there's five acres here, currently there's four buildings. Uh, we'll, we will be putting in a restaurant because we want to make sure that the car clubs and motorcycle, motorcycle people have a place to come for lunch or dinner or breakfast. So we're putting in a restaurant, it'll be a 40s diner. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're going to build two, possibly three more buildings on the site. There's lots of space. Uh, we don't need 380 parking spaces in like we have right now. We can use that for buildings. So our goal is to have 500 cars. Currently we're at about two and change, 200 and change cars. Uh, our goal is to have 500. Um, our restoration services continue to expand. We've got two more suites opening up, uh, or two more bays opening up for them. We've got 20, uh, maybe 30 now. Um, uh, lifts where the guys work. I've got 33 men working here. We should be at 50 by the middle of next year. Uh, we have a TV show coming up, so that'll probably really help increase uh, the traffic. It'll also probably uh, help us find more qualified people because uh, we're always looking. We're always looking for mechanics and service people. So, so it's a big plan, um, and uh, sky's the limit on that. So, in uh, 2007, I wrote through Las Vegas on my way to Miami on 2007 Victory Vegas. Nice, nice bike. They were brand new, really, um, that year. Um, after I, Bill and I met, he said, let's put it up on a stand and tweak it a little bit. Well, I certainly had no idea what that meant. Uh, Sean Ruddy, who's America's top bike, uh, bike builder, and he works here with us at, our, at um, Atomic Motors, he took it and uh, between he and Bill and 
Jared Fisher, who's our engine um, machinist, um, they got together and they built an incredible bike called the Black Cat Racing Special. Now it's won the AMA, it ran won the Rats Hole, it won um, uh, AMD show, a few other things, and the uh, bike is uh, about a 200. Hmm, it's it's a 200 mile an hour, about 300 horsepower, nitrous, methanol, and um, uh, turbo bike. Um, the gas tanks are in the um, exhausts uh, to keep the weight low. It was originally going to be a Bonneville salt flat racer, but it turned out way too pretty for that. So uh, that's called the Black Cat Racing Special, and we feature it um, in our motorcycle room right now because so much engineering went into the bike to make it what it is. And uh, I rode it a few times, but it's a little fast for me, so I went to a standard victory um, cross country. And uh, yeah, it's on a stand, and it's a beautiful bike, absolutely gorgeous bike. And well done. The boys did a good job.